I'm Brandon. I uh, have been really busy today, and I'm going to talk to you guys about RFID and stuff. So uh, my attorney said I should say this kind of crap. So, uh, uh oh, uh oh, we're good. Yeah, sweet, that worked. All right. So uh, the first thing is that no nothing I'm presenting is original to me, right? So all of this is a uh, is a conglomeration of other people's efforts. So. Uh, the whole point of this talk was like I wanted to be an elite hacker after watching Mr. Robot and I became a like an RFID script kitty. So uh, credit goes uh, where credit's due and that's to other people, not me. Um, so what else do we got here? I gotta make this a little bit bigger. Um, click. Next. Yeah, sweet. Oh, uh, uh, continuing with what my attorney said. So uh, I'm here speaking. I'm not representing anyone, including myself. Um, and uh, man, I can't see that. Oh yeah, we're not gonna do like any cool stuff here. So you know, everything that, that's out there is already known. And I have uh, no filter, so I'm probably gonna offend someone during this talk. All right, like brain to mouth, boom, there it is. Right. So uh, I'm sorry if I offend you. I didn't mean to. Um, Who's this guy? So uh, I'm Zoom equipped on Slack or Twitter, uh, also Brandon Murphy. And I'm not a red team guy, so I'm not an offensive guy. Uh, so like trying to break into a door is really outside of my expertise. Uh, and, but I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I helped found uh, SecDSM, I'm the vice president now. And I'm also a semi-professional blowtorch bar barber, uh, which means that I use a blowtorch to trim and fringe the hair on my face. It's pretty awesome, especially when you shave and then you do that. And I'm an InfoSet skid, man. Like, I, I don't really know that much. Uh, you know, I know a lot of other smart people, so I just kind of follow those guys. Um, but we're, oh, oh, I'm going to skip that because it's totally not cool. Uh, so how, uh, how I got started, my motivation uh, is kind of silly. So I started, like the guy said, by watching Mr. Robot. So this is the scene that kind of inspired all the work that I did. So hopefully I don't get sued by USA for showing this. Oh, there's no audio. Uh, sorry. Just pretend that there's some cool oots, 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 oots. <laughs> Audio doesn't work over VGA, so I apologize. Here, let's see if I can there's do this. Nah, that's pretty weak. So anyway, so he's bumping into people, and you can see that he uh, bumped into that one person really hard, and uh, he's pretty cool now. He's like, oh yeah, we got it done. So and then they clone the card, and then they're able to break into Steel Mountain, at least the first layer of Steel Mountain, right? So I was like, heck yeah, man, I want to break into a data center. That sounds fun. So, uh, so then after I watched that, I was like, hey. I don't know anything about this crap, so let's do a whole bunch of research, right? So first I was like, all right, RFID cloning videos, right? I, I knew I needed to learn from other people, so I did that. And uh, then I got a little bit more particular and started looking for previous DEF CON talks. Uh, so there was some really good research there. Um, and then I was like, all right, let's just go buy some shit. So uh, let's just search for RFID cloners. And there's like these like $10 little Chinese made RFID cloners. And you like hold them up to the card, clone them. So that was kind of fun. Uh, and then, oh yeah, I went to eBay. And then I just started buying shit. Like I, if it was under 10 bucks, I bought it. Uh, so that was kind of fun. My wife loved me. But then I got kind of serious about it. So there are a lot of cool people uh, that did some research. So, um, this particular slide, like this research slide, I don't know how we'll share our talks, but I have like a whole bunch of DEF CON videos and slides and um, people that are way smarter than I am that I actually use. So this talk, sorry, I can't really see my slides. So this talk is from Hope 6 in, 20, in, in 2006, where they're talking about uh, implantable RFID devices and how they were able to clone them. So I thought that was kind of cool. I like going back to 2006. Uh, and then uh, this guy, who uh, Jonathan, is uh, he did a lot of the research uh, that I used, so like how RFID cards work and some one-on-one -on -one stuff. And then, uh, so a lot of the work was originally done, uh, that I'll talk about, was originally done by this guy that runs ProxClone, but it was kind of a, like um, a double-edged sword, I guess, maybe. So he, would, he did a lot of the work. He actually demonstrated that this stuff could be done, that you can read an RFID card from three feet away and clone that. 
uh, but unfortunately he released the schematics but no source code. So you could get an idea of what was feasible, but you couldn't actually do it. And so these other guys, uh, yeah, so that, that's an image of what he created uh, that could read from approximately three feet away. So it's actually using a, uh, um, uh, an HID reader uh, that's designed for like parking garages, stuff like that, and to clone them. Oh man, that was really in poor taste, sorry. Uh, and so I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. I think this is what I want to do, but there's no, there's nothing there. Nothing for me to do there. So then I found this thing, which is called a Proxmark 3, uh, which is this guy. And so this one, uh, yeah, this is the same one from Elocal. So this is kind of gives you a size reference. Uh, it costs $212 shipped from, from Hong Kong. And, uh, and it works phenomenally, but it does both high frequency, low frequency. Uh, it was a little shady pain, the guy, but it worked out fine. They shipped it to me. So, um, so after, you know, I started doing the research, I was like, all right, let's just continue buying stuff. And so I went from the eBay stuff into more expensive stuff. And this is the thing that everyone said that you need. Like, if you want to do cloning and RFID work, this is what you need. So I was like, all right, let's, let's do it. So uh, then other people were like, hey, if you want to do NFC, um, then you need this Chameleon Mini. So there's a really good talk where these guys hacked, uh, well, I shouldn't say hacked, they um, exploited a vulnerability within some subway systems that allowed them to ride on the subway for free. Uh, so they could like reload uh, their NFC cards with subway credits, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so that's the Chameleon Mini. Uh, so then uh, while, while we were out at, uh, which one is this? Yeah, so when we were out at DEF CON, we got exposed to this uh, RFID cloner, which is a 40 EM4100 cloner. I don't even know what EM4100 is, right? Like I'm a total skid. I have no idea how this thing works, but I know on some particular cards, this thing works. So you hold up a card to it, you can save it to a slot. There's 16 slots and then you can replay that card. So you can go up to a reader and say, replay that one. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, again, links to all the guys that actually do this work. Um, so the problem with all of these is that you have to play a game of ask, grabby, grabby in order to grab someone's card, right? And so I'm not a big fan of being charged with sexual assault when I go up and grab someone's ass. So that's where I was like, we need to find a, a better solution to this. And that's where the, uh, oh man. So I'm gonna come back to that slide, slide number 12. I got it. So that's where things like the Tastic RFID Thief uh, that, that was released by Bishop, Bishop Fox. So this guy named Fran Brown kind of released this at DEF CON in 2013. Um, and this is, uh, so what you saw on the Prox clone website, this is pretty much the same thing except for it's totally open source. So I was able to make one of these. Uh, so like, it's kind of delicate because it's not really glued down or anything and I'm totally getting radiated with, with energy. But, so this is kind of what that looks like, and I'll show you. Uh, it's supposed to read from three feet away. Mine's kind of having problems, but, uh, sorry, that probably wasn't in the video. Uh, and so I wanted to make one of these, so that way I didn't have to play a game of Ask Grabby Grabby. And since this thing's been released, there, there have been a whole bunch of other ones that have been made. Uh, so I had a really hard time actually sourcing parts for this. So it's based off of an Arduino Nano, which was not for sale anymore. So I had to buy it off of eBay. Um, and it uses a screen that can't be made anymore. So these people have actually improvised, because it's all open source, they've improvised and improved on it. So there's one that um, it has, a, has a Wi-Fi hotspot onto it. So you connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, and then you can see all of the cards that you've read. And I'll, I'll try to give a demonstration of this. Not the Wi-Fi stuff, but... Um, so there's all sorts of ones that have been improved. The Why Gotcha, uh, the Prox Thief, as well as the Boss Cloner. So the Boss Cloner at the bottom is like a full-fledged reading and writing solution. So if you wanted like the turnkey solution, go buy a Boss Cloner now. They're like 1400 bucks. But you can walk within three feet of someone that's got a card and then hold your writable card up to it, and now you got a clone. So go walk in the door right behind them. So that's kind of cool. Uh, whereas this one, you'll see you have to like take an SD card out and make a clone. Um, so RFID explain it like M5. So we'll go back to slide 12 now. All right, so this guy, uh, his name's uh, Stephen, uh, yeah, Stephen Heath, gave a talk at DEF CON in 2012 about Prox Cards 101. His talk was good enough that I literally just wanted to steal from him uh, and give the guy credit, obviously, so borrow the slides. But go find his talks. Uh, I have a link to them in here. They're out on SlideShare. But there, if I were to give this talk again, I would actually just ask him to come up here and give that talk because he's, it was phenomenal. All right, so explain it like M5. So there are 
really two types of cards that I've worked with. Uh, low frequency, which works at 125 kilohertz, and high frequency, which works at 13.56 megahertz. So normally you'd be like, the most common stuff that you're gonna see there is HID working at low frequency and NFC working at high frequency. And I'll show you kind of both of those. Um, the reader actually powers up the cards. So like when we talk about wireless power, so these cards, the normal access cards, like these little guys, they don't have batteries in them or anything. So when you put them into the field of the reader, it reads it. So it actually powers up the card when it comes into the electromagnetic field of the reader. This one's having some power problems right now. And it, and it powers up the electronics in this card and uh, does some magic to like put out binary over the air. So the reader actually reads that interference. And uh, so it's kind of cool. There's all sorts of other cards that, that are out there, uh, but th I'm gonna talk about the ones that I always see. So you've got HID, <clears throat> which works generally speaking like this. So the card has some identifiers on it. And so there's normally a 26-bit card is the most common one that I see. You'll find some other uh, bit formats in there that has a facility code, which is up to, uh, there's 255 valuable or uh, available facility codes, and then the card ID. And you'll see this kind of when I, when I demonstrate making a clone. And then there are some other formats <coughs> that you can build as well that have like employee numbers. And if you pay HID enough, then they'll guarantee you the, the uniqueness of your facility codes. So it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting, right? So originally they started with 26 bits, and they were like, okay, we'll just start at number one and work up until we've populated all 26 bits. And uh, so that only leaves like, I don't know, a couple million card identifiers. So the, there's a good chance where if we're both in Des Moines and I work at company A and you work at company B and we both start at card number one and I have card number one, you have card number one, I can go up to your door, card number one, I'm you and I'm in. And so they added the, the concept of a facility code to help combat that, right? So now there's 255 unique facility codes which each have less card values, uh, but now you're more likely to have a unique card within your geographical area. If you pay HID enough, then they'll actually guarantee you a unique facility code. That's a corporate 1000 card, but this stuff's all boring, man. So uh, what you really need to know about RFID is that the output uh, is called this Wigan format. There's a whole bunch of history about this guy that created this uh, discovered anyway this like physics anomaly about the way that electromagnetic mag magnetic energy reacts. I don't know man, I don't know anything about it. But what I do know is over a wire, you have two wires, a data zero and data one, and both of them are sitting at five volts. And when you have a zero, data zero goes down to zero volts and back up for a time slice. So that represents a binary zero. When you have a one, then data one goes down to zero volts and back up. So that'll come important in a little bit. Uh, because if you don't, if you can't make a clone of the card, then you should attack the reader. And so they have these hardware implants that, that will read the data zero and data one in there. And so this is an example of a, the picture is, uh, is ESP key, which was actually just released in ShmooCon in January uh, by this guy named Kinney. Uh, all the credits are in, in the slides. Um, and then you've got BLE key, which came out a little bit before, uses Bluetooth. So the whole concept of these is that if you can't get access to a card, attack the reader. So I don't know if anyone noticed walking around here, but each of these doors in the room have a reader. And if you feel on the bottom of them, they have a screw. So if you unscrew that screw, you can pop open the reader and expose all these wires. So you put in this hardware implant, you leave it in there, you come back with your phone, and you connect to the hotspot, and now you can say, oh, yesterday someone had access to that room, I'm just gonna replay that guy's card. And then over that Wigan output, it sends it off and then the door opens. So it's pretty cool, like I thought hardware implants were kind of interesting. Until I met these guys here in Des Moines that took hardware implants to the next level. And uh, so these guys were pretty cool. They actually bought these uh, injectable RFID tags into their hands, had them placed, and uh, kind of mixed results on that, I think. Uh, they're still trying to figure out, I think, how to program them. There were some minor issues there, but I'm sure they'll figure them out. And if not, you can just surgically remove them, right? Uh, no, no big deal. Uh, you get another hand. Yeah, yeah, you, you get two tries at it. So it's cool. Um, let's see. And then demo time. So we're going we're gonna to give this a try. 
my buddy Nick made this cool little document camera. Oh wait, hold on for a second. All right, let's see what I actually had. So first thing that I wanted to do was demonstrate the RFID Tastic Thief. So I'm having power problems, right? The demo gods weren't very nice to me today. And normally this thing works, so this, this is an HID reader, uh, like straight up. Who's seen these, right? Like you pull up to a parking garage, they're from three feet away, right? So like you don't have to be so close to them. So when you take the cover off, you know, it looks something like this guy. And uh, so what I've done here is made that RFID Tastic Thief. So here's the Arduino, it has an SD card, it has an LCD display that would normally work. All right, now's the time to use that document camera. Thanks, Nick Stark. Yeah. Sorry, my screen's cracked, so you'll just kind of have to deal with a bad camera. Uh, so this is what this guy looks like. It's powered by 12 AA batteries. And uh, so you got the LCD, so which would normally show the cards that are being read, the Arduino. And uh, so instead of this, like now the newer ones have, a, have the ESP8622, 8266, wireless access point stuff that you connect to. So the idea, is that you can read a card quite clearly. And uh, it's supposed to work from about three feet away. Mine's having power problems, so that's about as close as you're going to get right now. I don't know. Normally, it's like way up here. Demo gods, right? And then it writes it to an SD card. And so with the SD card, it provides you all the information that you need to make a clone. So I'll demonstrate making a clone now. So I'm going to use the Proxmark 3. Put this guy in. And now you guys don't care about me. Sweet. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, man, I cannot see that at all. All right, sorry. Wow, you guys were watching me that whole time. That's creepy. All right, so, oh my gosh, I cannot see this. All right, I'm gonna, I gotta duplicate my screens. You guys see what I see now? All right, how's that look? You guys need bigger text, don't you? You can see how well prepared I am for this stuff. Okay, sweet. So what we're gonna do is uh, start the Proxmark. CD client. So it's, uh, the hardware has a client, right? So you have to install and compile this, this client. HTTYACM0. Let me scroll down. So um, what you'd normally do in this scenario is use that RFID Tastic Thief to read the ID. In this case, I'll actually demonstrate using the Proxmark to read an ID. So this is a readable, writable card. So we use a low frequency. So there's two antennas on this, so like directionality and stuff like that matters. So we'll do low frequency, HID, and then we're gonna put it in a mode where it just reads cards. And so now if I hold my card up to this reader, you can see that card number. And I take it away, it stops, right? So what we care about is this hex, <laughs> what we care about is this hex value here, uh, which is the unique identifier on an HID card. 
So to clone that guy, I'm going to copy that. Low frequency, HID, clone, paste that identifier, and now I'm going to grab a different card altogether. Uh, here, before I do that, we'll put this back in read mode. So this is going to be a different identifier. So this is the card. There we go. That's a goofy tag. And now we're going to clone that original card onto this guy, put it back into read mode, and there you go. So now that's a clone card, right? So the whole idea is that I use that RFID tastic thief, and I do that from three feet away. So what else do I have next? I don't need presenter mode anymore. Sweet, so RFID tastic, and it, oh, yeah, so NFC cloning. So this was pretty cool. I, uh, I had the opportunity to stay at a height. And so they gave me this card. And I was, it was actually my anniversary. I feel bad for my wife because I geeked out for like three hours trying to crack this card. And I got it. And so I wanted to show you guys this. So NFC is kind of interesting. There are actually all sorts of different uh, types of protocols that you can put on these cards. So... I figured it was a high frequency card because it wasn't like none of the low frequency stuff was working. And so you do a high frequency. <laughs> you do a high, uh, this thing called high frequency search. So what that does is just kind of scans everything and, and tries to find a card that uh, Proxmark knows about. And so. <laughs> Card's too close. Yeah, it's a little close. Power's back. Yeah, it must be working now. Uh, so we do a high frequency card, or a high frequency search, and it finds a card. So the important point, the important part, generally speaking, is going to be this unique identifier. So one thing to know about the MyFair, so this is a MyFair classic 1K card, which means it has one kilobyte of memory. So the interesting thing about this is that the UIDs are supposed to be non-writable. So I can't take this card and I can write over every block, every byte in this card, except for the UID. So what you do is you go on eBay and you buy an NFC card that you can write to on that block zero, which means I can make this card, a magic UID card, be any card I want it to be. But first we have to learn about this card. So they actually have encryption on the NFC cards in this particular MyFair Classic, but as, uh, as many encryption algorithms go, they get cracked. So I'm gonna per perform the crack on this and we're gonna actually clone this card. So the methodology that they use is to uh, fair check, is to check the card for known keys. So the, the NFC has a bunch of different protocols. This particular one has multiple sectors that are made out of each block. So there's 64 blocks on this particular card. And if I know the key to one block on this card, I can find the key to all of the other blocks, which then allows me to decrypt and use this key, uh, read all the data off this key. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit just to make sure that the demo gods are happy with me because they're pissed off at me right now. And uh, where'd my talk go? <clears throat> and this lies really well with the whole like script kitty thing, right? I don't quite know what I'm doing. I think I kind of know what I'm doing. It works. Wow, internet, sweet. Cool. So what we tell it to do is to check for all of the known cards that it knows. Yeah, sweet. So this command checks for blocks with known keys. Copy. Where'd VMware go? Sweet. Edit. Script kid, man. Copy and paste until it works, right? That's my motto. That's how I win CTFs. So we got to hold the card up here. So it's going to read the card and you'll see it. So there's 12 keys. They're kind of flying past as it goes through each block. Found valid key. So that's kind of the part that we care, that we care about. So uh, we know that there's a default key here of FFFFFF. There's 12 of them. And we know that the first one that it found is on sector two, block 11, and it's key type A. That's all I care about. So we're going to copy that guy. And now what we're going to do, oops, wrong way, is tell it to do a nested attack 
Uh, so one of the nice things about Proxmark is like you need help, right? You just, it's just right there. So high frequency, my fair, a nested attack, which takes that known key and will figure out all of the other keys for the other blocks. So card memory, it's a 1K. Uh, the block number is 11, and it was a type A key. <coughs> Paste that bad boy in there, and we do D, and what D does is it dumps it out to a file. You see D, write keys to binary file. So we hold that guy up there. And uh, this will only take a few seconds. So it's going to go through and find the blocks for all the other keys. I'm sorry, find the keys for all the other blocks. So at this point, my wife's like, hey, are we going to go to dinner tonight? And I'm like, I'm so close. Just a little <laughs> bit more Googling, and I'll figure this out. And uh, so I saw this point, and I'm like, all right, I think this is working. Like, I, I think this is going to work. So I got to this point, I'm like, all right, well, those are different keys than what I started with, so that's cool. But uh, it still doesn't get me anywhere closer to having this key be my hotel key card. And so I'm like, well, I don't know what else to do. So I keep on Googling around. What I find is that after I dump the keys, what I need to do is actually dump, use those keys to now dump the data off the card, right? Because there's 64 blocks on this card, and I need all the data to make an exact clone. So I'm like, all right, high frequency, my fair. How do I do that? So there's this whole like dump, right? I'm like, oh, all right. See my fair dump. Let's try that. So hold this guy up there again. And now it's going to use those keys and dump the data off the card onto my disk. Super exciting, isn't it? Sweet, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there, all right? So now I have this data. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't know what to do with this. So I Googled around on, this, on the Proxmark forums. It's a great resource. And I found this thing. So that this Proxmark actually supports Lula, Lua scripts. So there's one that's like dump to emule. Emule. So it's for emulation is what I gathered. And so I just it takes the dump, this data, this dump data dot bin, and puts it into a format in which the, the Proxmark can actually now emulate the card. <clears throat> and then what you do is you say, hey, man, now that I have that, I need to load my dump <laughs> into the Magic Chinese card. <laughs> so uh, we do a C load. And if you just do nothing, it, it, it asks for help. You know, like it gives you the help. So my fair C load. And it gave me the file. So a little bit more copy and paste. Oh, man, I hope you guys don't see CTF secrets for my Slack popping up. Copy that guy. So now it's going to go read that, and it's going to put it onto my magic card here. Man, I hope this works. All right, well, that seemed to work. So let's do this again. Read the original card. There it is. You can see the unique identifier. Read my card. Unique identifier is the same. So we've successfully cloned this card. So now if I go up into my Hyatt hotel room and I use this card, it works just fine. So I tried to actually uh, figure out, like, is there my name on this card? Is my room number on this card? Uh, and as it turns out, Hyatt doesn't do that. So at least in this particular case. So I'd still have to know the room number. I'd still have to know, you know, how to get in that room. But I thought it was an interesting exercise. And after that, my wife and I went out to dinner, and she didn't care. Um, <laughs> So that's uh, a NFC card. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, so I did all of that, right? And I was like three hours into it. So we come back from dinner, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And so I sit back down on my computer, and I'm like, I wonder if I really need to do all that. And so what I learned was, there, in looking through this, there's this whole like C set UID, set UID from Magic Chinese card. And so I'm like, all right, well, what happens if I just take this UID set UID, get the help there, right? All right, so it expects a hex value of the UID, paste. So the first thing I'll do is we'll just like, let's do this. Let's just write a different UID onto my writable card. I forgot my command, C set UID. So now you can see the old and the new. 
Put that guy back. Oh, let's do this. Search. So now you can see. Oops. Excuse me. So now you can see that. Uh, oh, geez, did I break it? Oh, there it is, dead beef. So, uh, so now I just rewrote this, the, the unique identifier. And as it turns out, that's all that Hyatt cares about. They don't care about all the rest of the data on the card. All you need is that unique ID. And uh, so when I found that out, I got even more excited. And I woke up my wife, and she, she was pissed. But uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm like opening and closing the door. And she's like, oh. uh, it was fun, though. I enjoyed it. So that's really all that, that's required. Like, you set that unique identifier, and that's all that they use. Um, so that's an FC. So the cool thing is, so I'm like, so then I started collecting these little cards, NFC cards. I'm like, if you stay at a hotel, hey, if anyone is staying in an out of town, staying in a hotel, and you have an NFC card, give it to me. It'll be <laughs> fine. I promise. So I did that one time. I asked people for their card, and they gave me the Sheridan card, which was pretty cool. <clears throat> and I was like, all right, it's got to be another high frequency card, so let's search for that guy. And this kind of gives you an example of all the different protocols that are on the card. So you can see that this one is a MyFair Ultralight EV1 with 48 bytes of data. And so here's that unique identifier. So the cool thing about these magic cards is that they can be whatever MyFair card I want it to be. They're programmable in that nature. So I can say, hey, MyFair, write this to be an Ultralight card, and it's going to be an Ultralight card. They also make very particular cards that, that uh, aren't quite that variable, uh, but it works great. So here's, man, I hope I don't regret this later on in my life. But so like your credit cards, right? They also have RFID on them now. <sighs> Ten years. This is going to bite me. Hopefully, I should probably just change my credit card after this. So uh, they also have RFID on them, but they use yet another, I'm sorry, NFC on them, but they use yet another protocol. I've found that these are a little bit more touchy. There you go. So this one uses DESFire 4K. I have no idea what that is. Uh, it, I think it uses real encryption. All of the research that I've done has indicated that these things aren't crackable with today's technology. So hopefully in 10 years I've got a new credit card and this isn't going to be a big deal because we all know that encryption is designed to only last for its meaningful time. And uh, so this expires, you know, sometime in the future. I'm not going to tell you guys. Uh, that goes back to my wallet. But, you know, like passports. Uh, so I actually compared it to my passport. Well, it uses the same technology. So hopefully this stuff's good. Um, so some defenses, right? So th that's actually the end of my talk. Uh, I don't have any more slides for you guys. So uh, some defenses, all right? They actually make uh, RFID uh, protecting wallets and shields, things of that nature. So we tested out two of these today that uh, advertised that they were good shields, and they weren't. And in fact, the Proxmark read them fine. In the shield, put them up to it, it read it just fine. Uh, what I've been told, I haven't tested this, it should be relatively simple, is aluminum foil around your card though, right? Create a little cheap Faraday cage. That works, so I've been told uh, by some guy on YouTube. So I know it's true. Uh, there was one though, like we actually put it, it was a metal enclosing case, uh, and that one worked fine. So uh, there was another guy that had a, a RFID shielding wallet, so it was like leather wallet, but you open it up and like the lining of the wallet has like some shimmery stuff on it. And I had tried that initially, like months ago, and I couldn't get it to read, but today we tried it and it worked just fine. So, um, you know, I guess maybe you get what you pay for, use some common sense. Um, the one thing that I'm always particular about is don't use, I kind of want to pull up this guy's slides, but I don't want to do it to him, but they talk about like men carry theirs in their, in their back pocket, right? Or it's on their, on their side or their lanyard, right? Women will carry a lanyard or it's in their purse or it's in their wallet. Uh, the question that I have is why carry your card if you don't need it? Um, don't carry it. Leave it in your car, man. Like the, the read distance from that from three feet away, I can't hold that up to your window and read it from your center console, right? So if you don't need it, if you're going out to the bar, just put it away. You don't need it. So stop carrying your stuff. Um, and be suspicious, right? Like if I come up and, and am standing right behind you in the men's urinal, like <laughs> kind of wonder what I'm doing, right? Like uh, pr protect your wallets. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much all I got. I'll take any questions if there are any, but I don't really know any answers because I'm just a script kitty. So, what's up, man?
have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you got one? Hey, bring it up. Let's come on, man. Let's do it. I kind of want to see this. Metal in the card. Let's see that. Oh, so this. Oh, wow, that is a nice card, man. <laughs> no, the, it's not. They're doing it. Um, it's not just this. The couple cards have been doing it. That's like. So I don't know. It blocks. No. Yeah, that. So I don't know, but but it's weird because you have to like mail it back to have it shredded or something. Really? Yeah. Can I try reading it? I don't. I don't think that this actually has any. There's no. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think there is. You want to try it? Yeah, let's try it. All right, let's try it, man. Sweet. Hey, how about a round of applause for this guy? He's, like, living dangerously here. Do you want to, like, stop the recording or anything just in case? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. Should I just? Okay.